Hey guys, um, thank you guys again for tuning in to Memphis Kim University. I'm Fine Wine, and today we're going to be talking about volumes by cross sections. Um, before I get started, um, I'm going. Oh, remember, um, worksheet and answers are in the description, so feel free to print those out or just look at them while you're watching to follow along. Um, before I start with the steps of this, I am actually going to try and attempt to explain the theoretical reason of why we're doing what we're doing, but ultimately, they're not going to ask you the theories on your exams, so if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's not the biggest deal, just make sure to learn the steps. But I'm going to attempt to try and explain why we're doing what we're doing first, or I guess I can do that as I'm doing this. No, I'm just going to do it now. So when we say volumes by cross sections, as you can see on the screen, there's this um, area sectioned off. Um, and so we're, and we're going to find the volume of that section through different means, through different ways of cross sections. And what across and what we'll be doing is if you can imagine, so there you have that triangle like shape, right? And if you can imagine something sticking up off the paper, let's say a semicircle sticking up off the paper, the base of the semicircle would be the line that's actually on the paper. And then the half circle just kind of, if this is the paper, the half circle just kind of sticks up off the paper like that. And what we'll be doing is we'll be using shapes like semicircles, rectangles, squares, and triangles. And we're going, to, we're going to be basically adding up the volume of all those little individ, individual semicircles or all of those areas of the semicircles because it's a 2D shape. We're going to be adding them up to create a volume out of them. Because if you have one semicircle in the front of the, like if you're looking at it like this, you have one semicircle in the front of the page, and then they'll have one a little bit further, and then you have one a little bit further in the page, and or a little bit further down the shape, so that, uh, so that this shape, this triangle-like shape that's sectioned off, is just gonna have a bunch of semicircles. I guess I can kind of try and draw it. Like if that's one, and you have to imagine these these arcs are up off of the page. You obvi I obviously can't do that on a 2D screen, but these arcs are just coming up off the page, creating volume by adding all these areas together, and that's what we're essentially doing. Um, and you're just going to add up all of these by integrating them and um, getting a volume. So that's what we're doing. If that doesn't make sense, if you can't really visualize it, it's super not the biggest deal because really all you need to know is the steps on how to do this, how to get the right answer, and how to, yep, how to just do it. So first I'm going to start by writing out the steps. Um, step one is um, identifying whether you're going to be using um, X or Y. And what that means is, is whether you're going to be measuring, whether the semi, or let's use semicircles still, whether the semicircles are going to go from top to bottom, like I was drawing with the red pen, or whether they're going to go from right to left, which, so the arc would be going like this, and the semicircles going like that. And the way you identify that is in each question, it's going to say, um, cross sections perpendicular to an axis. If it's the x-axis, you're going to be using the x values, and if it's the y axis, you're going to be using the y values. A little heads up, if it is the y axis, which I would say is less common, um, remember to convert all your functions into, um, in terms of y, so x equals blank, instead of y equals blank, and also remember when on the, um, on the integration, you're going to use the endpoints, the endpoints are going to be y values and not x values x values. So there's that. But we'll get to that when we get to a problem that uses y. Step two is going to be to actually draw the shape. Um, step two is going to be to draw the shape. And in each question, it's going to give you a shape. Um, sorry. Um, so 
each question is going to give you a shape. So it's going to be, um, as you can see in the first question, cross sections that are square. So it's just going to give you the shape. You don't really have to come up with that. Sorry, I pressed the pause button on the recording instead of on um, my video that I created writing. That was my fault. So step number three is you're going to compute the base of the shape. So the base of the shape is what's actually lying on the paper. If you want to take that um, 3D 3D kind of visualization that I was talking about earlier, the base is going to be lying on the paper. And if it's a semicircle, the arc is going to be coming off the paper. If it's the rectangle, the two heights are going to be coming off the paper. Same as if it's a square. If it's a um, triangle, then one height and the hypotenuse is going to be coming off the paper. But what you need to find is the base, because from the base you can compute the area of the shape. And so to compute the base, if you're doing it in terms of x, it's going to be the top boundary minus the bottom boundary. These boundaries can be a function, they can just be an x value, um, and if it's y, it's going to be right minus left. So once again, that can be a function or it can just be a, a, a y value, or I guess it would be an x value. Um, and then finally, you're going to integrate the area of the shape, and that's what gives you this volume. Um, I do want to take a step back. First off, um, I spoke wrong. So if it's an if you're computing the base of the shape and it's in terms of x perpendicular to x, I'll use this right here. Um, so the top is going to be a function, and the bottom is going to be that y value one. I think I said x value, but it's actually y. And then if it's right minus left, it's, it could be a function or an x value. Secondly, um, I didn't really. You actually have to. I. I, this is implied, obviously, but um, in order to integrate the area of the shape, you have to find the area of the shape using the shape that you drew um, and basic geometry formulas. Okay, so I think we're going to move on to question number one. If I scroll down. Okay, I'm going to move myself up here to make sure I don't interfere. So first we're going to find cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis x axis that are squares. So remember your first step is to identify whether you're using the x or y and in this case is perpendicular to the x axis so you're going to be doing um, x values and you're going to be doing top minus bottom for the base. And this um, and what my teacher taught me to do when we were doing this is when you identified that, you drew a rectangle within the area um, that you're finding the volume of. And that just kind of signifies the base of whatever shape you're doing. Um, and so it's vertical because it's perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, so... Um, so step number two, we've identified whether it's x or y, and step number two, we're going to draw our shape, which in this case is a square. And what drawing the shape really helps to do, I guess I don't demonstrate it the best in this video, is just figuring out what geometric formula you need to find the area of the shape. And step number three, we're going to move on, we're going to find the base of the shape. So the base of the shape in this case is the top boundary minus the bottom boundary. Um, the top boundary is going to be that function. Um, you can't see the function; it's cut off. Um, but it was at the it was in the top excerpt. If you're following along on the worksheet, just go ahead and look at it. The function is um, the natural log of x plus one is the function. So the top boundary is that function. So it's going to be ln of x plus one. And then the bottom boundary is going to be the y value that cuts off this shaded area, and that's actually 1. So you're going to do ln of x plus 1 minus 1. I continued with the plus 1 minus 1. Obviously, you don't have to. Um, it's just ln of x. But I just did it to kind of keep the format um, as uniform as possible. So, um, so now that we know the base, we need to find the area of this shape. Um, and as you guys know, the area of a square is just, um, of any rectangle is base times height. In this case, the base and the height are the same, so it's really just base squared. Um, so you're really just going to do ln of x plus 1 minus 1 quantity squared. Um, 
which is obviously just ln of x squared. But I, for the sake of um, uniformity, just did plus one minus one. And then finally, you're going to actually integrate that whole area in, to, in order to find the volume. I'll move, well, I don't really know where to move my sign. I guess here. Um, so, and um, one thing to point out is for the endpoints of this um, integration, you're going to use the x values of the intersection points um, because it's in terms of x. So it's 1 to e in this case, and you're integrating the area, which will be um, ln of x plus 1 minus 1 quantity squared, or just ln of x squared. Um, some questions will just ask you to write but do not evaluate. In that case, this is your answer. But if you actually do have to evaluate, just punch it in your calculator, and that will approximate to, let me see, I'm just going to write it, um, 7, 0.718. In this video, I'm really not going to show any um, calculations. I'm not going to show, I didn't show me punching anything into my calculator, mainly because I don't know where my calculator is. Um, but if you have a calculator that you can punch that integration, or integral into, you're all good. And a lot of the times it'll be right, but do not evaluate also. So no need to worry. Okay, question number two. Cross sections, once again, perpendicular to x-axis, but in this case you're using semicircles. So I, I pin highlighted that picture right there, because since we're still doing perpendicular to the x-axis, you can still use that um, drawing because the base of the shape is going to stay the same because it's still going to be the top boundary minus the bottom boundary. Yes. Okay, and we're doing semicircles this time. So you're just going to draw a semicircle, and the point of this semicircle is really just to recognize what geometric formula we're going to be using to find the area of this semicircle. Okay, step number three, top minus bottom. It's the same thing it was on the last question, the top boundary minus the bottom boundary, which is the ln of x plus 1, which is the top, minus the bottom boundary, which is 1, so it's plus 1 minus 1 again. Um, but the area of a square is obviously different than the area of a semicircle. Remember the area of a semicircle is 1 half um, pi r squared. The base in this case is the diameter of the semicircle, so it's actually going to, you could actually write it as 1 half pi d squared over 2, which is actually how we're going to be evaluating it. Um, I'll fast forward until I start writing again. Um, yep. Um, so the radius, remember, is just diameter divided by 2, which is top minus bottom divided by 2, um, which is ln of x over 2. Um, so the area is going to be 1 half pi um, r squared or d squared over 2, which is ln of x over 2. And then you're just going to stick that whole thing in an integral. Once again, since it's in terms of x, you're going to use the x coordinates and the coordinate and your <laughs> the x values and the coordinate, and you're going to do just stick that whole area in there. And if it asks you to evaluate it, it is roughly 0.282. All right, moving on to question number three. Um, in this case, we're actually going to do something that's perpendicular to the y-axis. So we're going to have to convert all of our function, or we only have one function in this case. We're going to have to convert our function into um, its y-values. And we're also going to use the y-values as intersection points on the integral. And I think I'm going to slide a picture right in here. Yep, so the base of our shape is actually going to change. This is going to be um, right to left. So the, our rectangle needs to be horizontal or perpendicular to the y-axis. Um, yes. Okay. So over in this little corner, I'm going to change the function into terms of y, um, which is really just simple, or not simple, it can be complicated, but it's just arithmetic. Um, I don't really know how to explain this to you. 
I'm just writing it out. So please just follow along. First, we're going to move the 1 over to isolate the natural log of x. To get rid of logs, you do that like the inverse. In this case, it's e. So you're going to end up with um, e. I don't even know if it's the inverse. That might be the wrong. But hopefully, y'all know your log rules. And you know it's e to the y minus 1. So instead of using ln of x plus 1, we're going to use e to the y minus 1. Um, so moving on to step number 2. Um, as you can see, as I'll hopefully underline soon, um, it's rectangles whose height is 5 times the base. So I'm drawing a rectangle, showing that relationship. And then the base is actually right minus left in this case. Um, as you can see from the picture, the right is just this x value. And if you guys don't know what the x value is, you're like, that's just a line. Where is it? Make sure to look at these coordinates. The x value is e. So the right boundary is going to be e. And then the left boundary is going to be your function, which remember you converted to terms of y. So it's e to the y minus 1. So now we have the base. And we know the relationship of the base and height is um, 1 to 5. I write this out in a really ugly way. So that's the base right there. And then we're going to want to multiply it by the height, which in this case is 5 times the base. See, it's pretty ugly, lots of parentheses. Um, and then another way you can actually write this is um, 5 times e, five times the quantity of e minus e to the y minus 1 squared, um, which is how I write it in the integral. But either are correct, this is just kind of um, condensing it down a little bit. Um, but if that confuses you, it's just base times height. However you want to write it works. So remember, guys, in this case, we're going to use the y values um, because we're doing things in terms of y. So it's 1 to 2 are those um, intersection points that you're going to be using. And then you just stick the area into the integral. And remember, it's actually dy. I cross it out and write dy because things are in terms of y. All right. Oh, and if it asks you to evaluate, that's roughly 6.21. All right. So now we're going to do cross sections, um, once again, perpendicular to the y-axis. So that little picture that I hopefully pulled out, I might not. Oh, there we go. I'll move myself right in the middle. Um, so um, that picture holds true because remember the base of our little shape is still going to be going perpendicular to the y-axis. Once again, we're going to have to convert things into in terms of y, but luckily we did that in the problem above, so I'm not going to write it out again. So remember the function is now e to the y minus 1. Um, so now we're doing isosceles right triangles, um, which looks like that. Um, and as you guys know, isosceles means that two of the sides are the same length. So we know that in this case, the base and the height are the same length, which is great. All right, so the base, um, once again, is right minus left. It's the same base as before, so e minus e to the y minus 1. Um, and in order to find the area of the shape, we have to know the area of a triangle, which is 1 half base times height. Um, luckily, in this case, this is the reason it works, is base and height are the same. So it's really just 1 half base squared. Um, yep. All right. So I'm going to write that out. Um, we already have the base, so it shouldn't be too hard. So the area is 1 half the quantity of e minus e to the y minus 1 squared. And then we're going to stick that in an integral with the intersection with the end, with the endpoints of our integral being the y values of the intersection points from the um, picture. So it's one to two, and then you just stick that area in there, and that is the answer. For any constants like one half or um, 
All I can really think of is one half right now. You can move those outside of the integral. I just stick everything right on in because it makes it easy. Um, you don't have to remember what can be out and what can be in. Um, and it's totally correct if it's inside the integral, but some of those constants, if you will if you see any problems written out, um, the constants might be outside the integral, but um, and you can do that, but you definitely don't have to. All right, so we are moving on to the back page. Um, hold on. Let me move this up for you so you guys can see it. Sorry if you can see my slider. Um, I'm just going to leave it up. Um, so in this case, the um, we're doing the exact same thing. And the main thing that's different about this is, A, we have two functions. Um, there's not just two boundaries crossed off by um, x and y values. And the second thing is the intersection points of these two functions are not given. And so the way you'll find these, I don't demonstrate this in the video because once again, I don't have my calculator, is um, the easiest way to do it is to, if you have a graphing calculator, um, graph these two functions and then just literally scroll over to the intersection point and it'll give you the x and y terms. Um, so that's the way you want to do that. Um, I would demonstrate it, but I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know where it is. Um, but that's the easiest way to do it is just to graph it and then just scroll over, find the um, points. So if you're not given them, that's your first step. That's what you have to do. Um, and I think I write that out. So I'll scroll through because I just kind of verbally said it all. Um, yep, find your intersection points. So if I had my calculator and I scrolled all the way over, those are what I mean by the intersection points, by the way. Those are where the two functions cross. Um, and in this case, um, we're just doing two um, perpendicular x-axis, so I only found the x values of the intersection points, but I recommend to just go ahead and write out the x value and the y value, um, just in case you're given multiple problems and one of them's in terms of the y-axis. Um, but I only write out the x-axis ones because that's all I was given, and I couldn't go find it because I don't have a calculator. Okay, but anyway, in this case, um, these are the intersection points, the x values of them. Cool. All right, so now we are going to move on to problem number five. And so it's perpendicular to the x-axis, so we don't have to worry about changing anything into terms of y's. Um, and... Sorry for the pause. Um, so in this case, we're, we know that um, we're looking for a rectangle. It says it right there in the question. Um, and we're actually given the height of the rectangle. It's just another function. So that's pretty easy, too. Um, I write that in as h of x. And now we're moving on to step number three, which is finding that base, um, which is, because it's in terms of x, is um, top minus bottom. So we know the top function, as it's seen in the picture, is f, and the bottom is g. Um, the functions are cut off from y'all's video, but once again, it's the top blurb if y'all are following along in a separate worksheet, and if not, I write it down below. Um, a lot of my teacher, at least, um, wouldn't make us actually write out the functions. It could get, it could get pretty jumbled. We'd just, do, we'd just write f of x minus g of x. Um, but I wrote out the full functions, like what the functions actually were, just for clarity, and um, some teachers might actually make you write it out. So it's always good to be prepared and show you guys everything. Okay, so f of x is um, 2.5 cosine x, um, and g of x is x squared plus 0.5x plus 0.7. Um, so that's what f of x minus g of x looks like. That is what your base is. Um, and now we have to find the area of the rectangle, which as you guys know is base times height. So we have the base, which is f of x minus g of x, and we have the height, which is h of x. So a whole bunch of functions, um, all being combined in weird kind of ways, um, and really messy to write out. I don't know if I write it out again, um, excuse that missing parenthesis, um, and so now we, um, 
and this is why the intersection points are important because you need um, ending points for your integral. Um, because it's perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to be using the x values of the x values of the intersection points, which are written above. Um, And then we're just going to plug in that base times height into the integral, and that will be the answer. Or you have to evaluate it, but that will be how you what you evaluate. Um, and I actually write out the whole equation, which is very long and dirty. Um, but just so you guys could see, and because this is exactly what you'll be typing in your calculator to evaluate. Um, you can't just type in f of x. The calculator doesn't know what f of x is. Um, and that h of x is just given in the problem. So that's what you're going to be typing in your calculator to solve. If you're asked to evaluate, that is, um, oh, and actually, I write out kind of just a simplified form so you guys know what's going on right here. Um, and that is roughly eight point five seven. <laughs> oh four nine. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are going to be doing the same thing, except this time we're going to be doing semicircles again. Sorry, you can see my slider; it's just part of it right now. Um, so it's perpendicular to the x-axis once again, so we don't have to convert anything, and we don't have to worry about finding the y values of those intersection points. Um, and remember, um, the area of a semicircle is one half pi r squared. Um, excuse the miss right here; that's not right. Um, but it could also be I correct it also. <laughs> oh no. Let me slide down so you guys can see. There. Okay. Um, which can also be written as 1 half pi d squared over 2. Sorry, I kind of combined those. Um, and that d squared over 2 is really what we're doing because we just know the diameter and we're dividing it by 2. Um, because the diameter is the base, which is top minus bottom, same thing it was last time, f of x minus g of x, or the nasty 2.5 cosine x minus x squared plus 0.5x plus 7, 0.7. Um, yep, it's that. I'm not going to rewrite it out just because it's really long and frustrating. Not frustrating, just annoying. Um, so we have to find the area of the semicircle now, which is 1 half pi d squared, which is f of x minus g of x quantity squared, um, all of that divided by 2. And we're going to plug that into our integral um, with the intersection points, the x values of the intersection points being the endpoints again because things are in terms of x. Um, and these constants that I was talking about, that one half in the pi would also qualify as constants. So you could have pi over two on the outside, you could have one half pi on the outside, um, but you can also just as easily put them on the inside of the integral and it is not a big deal. Um, and I'm writing out the nastiness inside just so you guys know what to type in your calculator because I can't show you guys because I don't know where it is. Um, so all of that is going to be in your calculator. Um, which roughly equals um, 1.274. That's a squiggly equal sign that's not an x. Um, sorry. All right, moving on to number seven. This one is not any harder. It's just kind of tedious. Um, as you guys can see, we get a new picture. We get a new um, cross section we're trying to find. But, um, and we have two functions this time as well. But as you can see, um, the, um, excuse me, the, the top boundaries change depending on where in the, um, hey guys, sorry for the pause. Um, so as I was saying, um, the top boundaries of your area change depending on where on the area you are. So, 
If you guys can maybe guess, what we have to do is divide this area up into two different sections and just add those two sections together. Um, we split them off depending on where these two functions intersect and actually the top changes. Um, so I'm going to be doing basically two separate problems and you just add the um, integrals together. So um, we're doing squares as it says. So if you draw out the square, you know that the um, area of that square is just going to be base squared. And if we're starting from the left, then the um, top minus bottom is going to be square root of x um, and the bottom is going to be 0. So it's square root of x minus 0. Um, which, as you guys know, means that the whole area is the square root of the quantity square root of x minus 0 squared. Of course, you can leave off the minus 0. I just do it for sake of uniformity. So that integral is going to be, um, that's going to be what's in the integral. But you might be asking yourself, oh wait, what? How do we know what the endpoints of this integral are? We know that zero is where it starts, but where does it end? And this is another instance in where you guys are going to have to find the intersection point. Best recommendation, just graph the two functions, slide over, and see where they intersect. Um, in this case, I on, you once again only need the x value, so um, I didn't find the y value. I just write the x value, but I always recommend um, writing out both just in case you need them both um, for two different problems or something. So um, that intersection point, as you guys can see on the graph, um, is where they change, or is where they cross. Um, it's where the slope of the top of the function changes. Um, and that x value of that intersection point is, um, I'm about to write it. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, 1.697224. Um, and that's going to what you're going to be using for the ending boundary of this um, integral. And what we're going to stick in the, in, a, in the integral is the area we already found, the square root of x minus 0 quantity squared. And that's the first half done. And now we just do the second half. We do the exact same thing except with that different function, um, 3 minus x. So the base, as you guys know, is top minus bottom. Um, in this case, the top is 3 minus x, and the bottom is once again 0. Um, and so the area, as you guys know, of a square is just base squared. So it's 3 minus x minus 0 quantity squared. Um, and so now we're just going to plug that into the integral. And the endpoints, once again, are um, you might be a little confused. In this case, the... Um, that area starts with the intersection point, so it's actually going to be on the bottom, and then it ends at the x value. Since we're using we're using x values, guys, remember it ends at three. Um, so those are your endpoints, and you're just going to stick that area in there. And if you solve for both of those and then add the two numbers together, um, I don't. I just. I have the final number because that's all my teacher gave me is um, that number is going to be 1.274. No, it's going to be 2.718. Sorry. Um, and so this, so in this case, the tops changed, um, but it can also be the bottom, the right, the left, depending on, so if you're doing in terms of x's, what's what's going to cause you to do two separate integrals is if the top or bottom, the functions intersect and change the top or bottom boundary. And if it is um, in terms of y, it's going to be right or left. Um, if they intersect on the right or the left and the right or left boundary change, it's going to require um, you to do two separate integrals. Sorry, couldn't think of the word. Um, so just keep an eye out for those. Um, I don't think they're any harder. They're just a little bit more work. Um, you definitely can make more careless mistakes in them. Um, but just do the system like we've always been doing. So question number eight is kind of the most different question, I guess. Um, and it can be very intimidating to students because they're like, we don't have a shape. We don't have, a, we don't have anything normal. We don't have a base that we can use. Um, which can be intimidating. Um, so step one and two and 
three are really kind of just out the window. You just don't have anything. But what we do have, um, which is really the most important thing, is the um, area. We already have the area of the horizontal cross cross section, and what we do, what we have the shape and the base for is to just find the area of the shape. And since we already have it, um, sorry, and since we already have it, we just know to integrate that whole function they gave us. Um, so we just stick that whole thing inside the integral. And you might be asking yourself, well, that's great, but I don't have the endpoints. Um, and they usually, and they have to give you the endpoints, obviously. So if a tank of water has a height of four, that means the top of it is four. That means the top of that cross section is going to be four. And you will, you might be saying, well, what's the bottom? And if it's not implicitly, explicitly said, it's going to be zero, right? Because it starts at the bottom, zero, and goes up to four feet. So it's zero to four are going to be your endpoints. And then you're just going to evaluate that. <coughs> Excuse me. Which gives you roughly 22.667 cubed feet. So, so if you do get confused on, um, oh, there's my ending smiley face. Um, so if you ever are doing cross sections and you're not given a base, you're not given a shape, make sure, go ahead and look and see if you're given an area because that's really all you need that takes the, this is one of the easiest problems because you don't have to do all this extra algebra to find the area that you're going to integrate. So that is great. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Make sure to keep watching Memphis Cum University. Good luck in all your studies. Um, and once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.